Hey guys, it's Nick. Welcome to another episode of Team Minus 365. If you want to get the latest updates in Microsoft without having to sift through the 100 or so announcements like me, stay tuned because in this episode we're covering all the latest features, enhancements, and releases that you don't want to miss. Hey guys, so diving in here, just a quick reminder, I do supplement these videos with a blog post with more helpful information about all these announcements. So be sure to check that out after you watch this video. Diving in here though, we're gonna start off with Microsoft Teams. And this first one here is related to a new threaded conversation layout option that users could select from. Previously, if you were within these posts or within a Teams, you would have the capability to reply, but it gets pretty clunky in looking at that context versus the rest of the conversations going on. So you allow you to fork that thread off into its own panel, as you'll see here in these screenshots. Timelines on this one's mid-August and be complete by late August. Next one here I like a lot just because I'm a user that likes to have different windows open, but this is giving you capability to pop out your core apps into a new window like chat as an example here. So you have your context of maybe having all of your chats in one pane and then your teams in a different window. Timelines on this one is mid-September, be complete by early October. Last one here for teams is related to the admin center and for admin specifically, this is remote log collection for Windows and Mac devices that you can do here to help troubleshoot any potential issues that users are having. Timelines on this one is late June and be complete by late July. Speaking of updates, guys, we've been making a lot of updates to Cloud Capsule, which is the automated security assessment tool that I built here that maps to various compliance standards and provides you a holistic report that maps to over 100 data points in under 60 seconds on average. You get a really quick scan to identify the posture within a tenant as well as just the general attack surface that you might want to be paying attention to. We've been doing a lot of updates here around the multi-tenant level reporting. So now you can come in and actually search for a policy or configuration within Microsoft that you can span across all of your customers and see if they're in compliance. And I can actually click in here and I can see the historical lens as well to see if this ever has fallen outside of compliance. I can also do the same within the metric section here. You can search for something like users without MFA. And I can see that across my clients and clicking in gives me that meta detail of all those users and the types of coverage that they have. And then I can also see that historical lens to see how that's been trending or any of those changes over time. So if this looks interesting and you guys want to run a free assessment on your tenant or a customer tenant, be sure to go to cloudcapsule.io and sign up for that free trial today. Shifting into Outlook here, this announcement is really related to this two-click view for encrypted emails that you can configure as an admin. As you can see in these screenshots here, if a user gets an encrypted message, they can click on the view message to view the full content. It's not requiring them to do some type of additional authentication. Use case here would be if they're maybe in a public setting where they're sharing their screen as an example, to not have those messages being shown by default and giving them some explicit workflow that they're actually seeing an encrypted message. Timelines on this one is GA today actually for the client users and this is going to roll out mid-June, be complete by late June for iOS and Android. For Microsoft Intune here, this one update is related to hot patch settings with the Windows Auto Patch. If you guys aren't familiar, Microsoft recently has included Windows Auto Patch within Business Premium, which is a great win. But this specific feature here is basically allowing or setting by default in the quality update policy to configure the device to hot patch, which means it does not have to restart to get that patch applied. And this is automatically gonna be set to allow. Don't see any real big problems with this because it's actually less user friction, obviously than the device restarting. This will happen as it states there that June 23rd timeframe. Shifting into the admin section here, this first one's related to your Defender for Office 365 safe attachment policy and specifically deprecating a setting where you could choose to just monitor the message and basically get the audit trail of what was going on. Microsoft's recognized that's not really secure and they basically want to enforce some stronger settings here. So if you're on the monitor setting today, you're automatically gonna be converted into this block, which might cause some disruption in the sense of emails moving into a quarantine. As an example, of this so just need to be paying attention to that if you do have that setting on a lot of us should already have it at that block stage definitely best practice this will happen early july and be complete by late august next one here for entra is related to passkey profiles in the authentication methods policy which is in a preview state this is something i thought was going to be already out of the box but basically it's giving you more granularity to configure multiple different passkey policies 
great example of this is if you wanted to scope some users to have FIDO2 key passkeys, as well as another group of users that might use a passkey with Microsoft Authenticator. So giving more flexibility here, you can see more of that in the screenshot. Timelines on this one is November 2025 for this preview. And then the last one here for the admin section was pumped about Microsoft has this whole secure by default initiative where they've iterated over the years here slower than I think I'd like to see, but certainly security improvements that we're seeing there as well. The settings they're updating here is related to blocking legacy browser authentication, which I think is low footprint for most of us out there, but more specifically, the one I screenshotted here was requiring admin consent for third-party app access. We see this used by attackers a lot after initial access for persistence techniques, data exfiltration. So this is a really powerful one to configure um, off by default where you need an admin to consent to these third-party apps. This will have mid-July be complete by August. Shifting into our last section here, which is Copilot. This first one's related to real-time voice capabilities on the iOS application. This is something that if you've used ChatGPT, it's already been available today. We can basically just converse with this agent, if you will, or the, you know, the actual model itself. And it's really pretty powerful if you've actually used one of those. But this is coming now for Copilot. Be interested to see how well that plays out versus if you've, again, used ChatGPT. Timelines on this one's early July and be complete by early September. This next one here is called People Skills, which is generally available with this new skills agent. If you're not familiar with this one, it's combining Copilot Chat, Microsoft 365, and Viva Services. So this is basically deriving a taxonomy of skills within your organization. And the basic premise here is that users would be able to find and help find other users in the organization that have a certain level of skills that it's learning from based off the activity that they're doing within the Microsoft 365 ecosystem um, to basically surface, you know, uh, people they could interact with that might be able to help them the most as a use case. But there's a lot to unpack with this one. So certainly linked the uh, full details if you're interested in my blog post. This will happen early June and be complete by late June. Next one here is giving users the ability or admins the ability to upload custom dictionaries in Microsoft Teams uh, meeting transcripts, basically helping you identify maybe custom taxonomy that you're using or terminology that's used internal to the organization to help derive better transcripts, better summaries, better action items uh, from what Copilot derives after a meeting. This will happen early July, be complete by mid-July. Next one here for Microsoft Teams, also interactive agent for meetings and calls. I've actually had this if you've created an agent in Copilot Studio, but this is extending into third-party agents as well too that you could include or integrate within Microsoft. The benefit here is that you can bring them into a meeting. You could have them, as you can see in these screenshots, um, accessible to all users within that meeting. And then they have history support, meaning they can actually... Uh, support a previous session and remember that and have context there to bring uh, further context into new questions that are asked in future meetings. Timelines on this one's mid-June, be complete by late June. Next couple here are going to be some mobile on-the-go features. This first one's here relating to giving users the ability to help prepare for meetings. It's effectively allowing you to scan all of your content, such as your emails, documents, previous interactions, previous meeting recaps, to give you some tasks to summarize to prepare for uh, future meetings you can see here in the screenshot. Timelines on this one's early July and be complete by late July. Next one here is a really cool functionality as well on the go, which is giving users the ability to create a meeting from an email thread with Copilot. So you can see that here within the screenshots, but effectively it's going to be able to use the context of the email to auto-generate things like the title, the description of the meeting that users can modify, just kind of speeds up that process here and gives them a nice way to streamline that workflow. Timelines on this one's early July and be complete by late August. Next one here has been available on the client application, but now extending into iOS and Android, which is this prioritization concept here where Copilot's basically surfacing priority emails that you need to respond to or look at. And it can learn over time by users interacting with it, tell it, no, that's not actually an important email as an example. Timelines on this one's late June and be complete by late December. And the very last one here is related to PowerPoint and Copilot within PowerPoint. We've had these capabilities of being able to generate a presentation from a file like a Word doc. It's now extending into Teams meetings as well, which is pretty cool. So if you get off a Teams meeting, you have a lot of discovery that went on, you want to create a presentation off of it, you can now do that by just simply doing that forward slash and referencing that meeting. 
Timelines on this one's gonna be late July and be complete by mid-August. Okay guys, that's everything I had for you today. Definitely comment below with any questions you had around these updates. Be sure to subscribe to the channel if you're not already to get these updates each month. I'll see you guys next week.